What's going on everybody? Brandon Schaefer here. Thanks for joining me. We're going to talk about harmony. What it is, how to use it in your paintings, all that kind of stuff. So I got an email from a subscriber asking me about harmony. I figured I'd make a whole video just explaining my thoughts on it and what I've learned and what it actually is. And they were asking me questions about critique number 20. I did a critique uh, episode number 20 of one of my own paintings of this giant sequoia in the snow. And they had some questions about that painting. So I'm gonna ad address some of those as well as all the other questions they have regarding harmony. Regarding the light purple and kind of turquoise teal sh shadow colors that I used in the snow, is that the color you saw or was it just a hunch to use those colors to reflect what you did? Partly where I got those colors from is that you do see some of those in the snow. If you're out in the snow and in the shadow, you will see kind of these purpley gray type of tones. Now the way I use them, I exaggerated them a lot because I found it just to be a beautiful color and it just worked with the color scheme, the color scheme of the entire painting. The orange on this giant sequoia, the greens of the background, it just made sense to have a really strong type of purple in the painting because then it's kind of a secondary color scheme. So you have uh, primary colors are red, yellow, blue, secondary colors are orange, purple, green. So that was the kind of color scheme that that painting has. So adding in uh, that purple just helped the overall color scheme, at least in my opinion. And adding in the light teal, kind of a green blue, it kind of goes in the realm of the greens, but also it's the same value as the purple. So what it does, it just makes, it adds some vibration. It's called broken color. Um, I'm going to be talking a lot about that here shortly in other future videos and stuff uh, about broken color and vibration and it just creates a more natural look to it and I just felt those colors were beautiful that's so that's why I kind of used them in that painting and they didn't distract from the rest of the painting. How do you know what colors to use to create a certain effect? How do you know to use such and such color into the scene to bring harmony to the painting and is harmony the same as pop? Well, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what colors to use to make a certain effect. Um, it's really just studying other artists' work, other great artists, seeing how they do landscapes, and then kind of putting my own spin on it. Um, to some extent, colors, color is really a feeling to me. It's like, okay, if I want to use a strong blue here, I'll use a strong blue and make that pop. It's really determining what you want to pop in your scene and what you want, what's the focal point. So you have to kind of assess what you're trying to say to the viewer for your painting, what you want to communicate. And also just experimenting, have fun with it, playing around with color. I think it's a fun thing to do. But you have to be careful because harmony, you want your colors to be harmonious. That's where. That's what harmony means. You want everything to be harmonious and work together, create unity. As far as what colors to use to bring harmony to the painting, it's not about what colors to use to bring harmony. Harmony is achieved by, if you use one little spot of color somewhere, to bring more harmony to the painting, you use that same color somewhere else. So then it starts creating this unity, this harmonious feel to it. So using a very simple color scheme, like a, a yin and yang color scheme, blue and orange. If, you're, if your canvas is predominantly blue and orange, it's a harmonious color scheme. Those colors just work together. But you could really do that with almost any kind of colors. You could do blue and red, different shades of blue, different shades of red. It's going to have some harmonious feeling to it. But if you use, you know, 12 different colors, it's going to be a lot tougher to create harmony in the painting as opposed to keeping it simple and using like two colors. Uh, it's all just kind of personal preference and just figuring out, you know, making it work and making it look good. And is harmony the same as pop? Not exactly. Making something pop is bringing it out. It's kind of standing out, it's sticking out. You don't really want anything to stick out if you're going for more, I, I mean, you can, I'm not saying you don't want to, but if you're going for a harmonious feel, I mean, think of music. All the keys on a piano, you know, hitting them in a certain way can be harmonious, but also hitting them hitting certain keys at the same time, it just doesn't sound right. There's like the vibrations and stuff it gives off just don't work. They're not harmonious together. 
So that's th if you think of harmony that way, you want things to work together. That's what that's all harmony means. It's a very simple concept, but it's kind of hard to grasp. There's nothing to really grasp. It's it's sort of a a concept that is just kind of understood when you look at something. You can I mean, it's very easy to look at a painting and go do, do those colors work? Is something sticking out? Is there something not harmonious? I mean, most people can figure that out. We're just trained as human beings. We can see that really quickly. Where do you get your inspiration from? Uh, from nature. Nature and other artists that love nature. A thought or picture in your mind or a scene that you actually see? Usually it's something that I actually see, um, like that Sequoia painting. That was from a photograph that I took while I was in that park, walking trails and stuff. That was from a photograph, and then I just turned it into a painting. Now, I didn't exactly copy the photo. It doesn't look exactly like the photo, but I just made it into a good painting as best as I could. You know, I kind of designed it a little bit better. I changed some angles of trees so that it would work better with my design and, and my goal of what I wanted to communicate. How do you challenge or stretch yourself artistically? I mean, I think every painting I do is a challenge. I, I think most people won't see it like that, but every painting I do is a challenge. So it's always trying to create something different because I, I mostly paint trees and forests, so I kind of have to really challenge myself to go, okay, how can I make this interesting? What, how is this going to be different from the paintings I've already done? What kind of colors can I experiment with and, and play around with lighting effects and creating interesting compositions? So I, I think it's all about focusing it's not all about focusing on something, but for me, but for me, it's about focusing on something, trying to master that as much as I can, mastering forests and trees. Um, but I also draw other things. I draw from life. I draw hands, portraits, faces, figures, my cat. <laughs> Even though I stick to painting, I mostly love painting trees and forests, but I don't just stick to that uh, alone. I, I do a lot of different things. And now with my Patreon and stuff and all these lessons I'm giving out, you know, I'm always looking for what can I do different? What What is something that I can, uh, you know, I take people's requests. Oh, can you paint this? Have you, have you, can you draw that? Do this? So I'm always trying different things. It's just, it's kind of just an intuitive thing. So that's all the questions here in this email. So I hope that that kind of clears something up. Harmony is just about, th there's a lot of different ways to create harmony and I'll probably address that in a different video if not in this video. But using a limited palette, using a palette of red, yellow, and blue, that can create harmony in your painting. And taking that a step further is using red, yellow, and blue for every mixture that you create, for the most part. Almost every mixture, unless you're doing a very light, kind of intense yellow, like l white and yellow, um, you might not want to mix blue and red into that. But other than that, in your dark color, your shadow colors, use red, yellow, and blue. Even if it's just a touch of yellow, or a touch of red, or a touch of blue, Make sure you use all three colors. That's going to create harmo harmony throughout all your color mixtures because they have um, each color will have yellow, each color will have blue, and each color will have red. So they already all have something of, of every color. Like I was saying earlier, if you use one, if you use like a dot of red in one part of your painting to create more harmony through the painting, you have to add more of that red throughout the scene, and then it'll start becoming harmonious. But you have to be careful because. There's a thin line between being so har harmonious and being boring. So that's where, that's the challenge is, is it's something I've been, you know, dealing with and, and trying to work against and, and kind of uh, play around with it. Like that painting, the, that purple color, those, that purple and that, that light green, those are very strong colors actually. I, I didn't gray them down a lot. They're very strong colors but I was able to make them work in the whole scene. The painting's over there, that's why I'm looking at it. You don't want things to be harmonious, overly harmonious, because then it just comes boring. So that's where you need variation and broken color and all these things to create kind of interest. You want it, you want it to be interesting and not just boring from so much harmony. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. Give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever. I don't really care what you do. <laughs> but give it a thumbs up. And yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for the next. Peace.